and we're back we're back <laughs> i can't believe i'm doing this video uh, i'm doing it i have to I, I can't i can't sit back any longer now i did this video a little bit a while ago and the reason i haven't posted it out is because i've got my deep water series right here that's uh that's just i had to finish it I had to finish my deep water series before i put this video out so i'm a little little bit late okay but <laughs> I'm going to do this video. Now, what caught my eye is this. I usually kind of leave these things alone. I started seeing this creep up on social media and I was thinking to myself, no, these guys are trolling. They can't, this can't be true. Like people can't actually think this, right? No, they do. It, it, it and it blows my mind. Someone actually already made a video on this. Give them props. John Cruz made a video. I don't, really watch a lot of YouTube, but it did pop up on an email that I get. It's best of tour. Here's the email blast, right? They do a phenomenal job. They do a lot of good stuff, uh, fishing content things. If, if you're not already a part of this, they do really cool stuff. They have a lot of neat things about just the fishing world, fishing tournaments, everything else like that. So Cruz had gone on there and he did a phenomenal job in this video. I was never going to go this route in the video. Uh, John Cruz probably knows a lot more about the technical side and maybe did his research. If he didn't, good job, John, on actually just knowing all this other stuff when it comes to his electronics. I went a whole different route when I was thinking about this. And here's what it was. And I'm by no means a live scope expert. Now, have I caught some fish off live scope? Yes. And if you're tuning in or never heard my thoughts on live scope, Here's another video, okay? So you can you can hear my thoughts on live scope and technology. I'm not the biggest fan of where technology is taking our sport in the sense of all this stuff's really cool. Totally agree. Like, and if you don't have it and you're upset with it, I get that too. That's why I made this this other video. It is cool stuff, right? If you have it, if you can afford it. Uh, my whole take and why I made this other video. It was that I'm in a place right now where I can kind of justify it. Affording it, yeah, there's guys out there that can go throw away thousands like it's no big deal. I mean, I count freaking, I count every couple dollars I, I throw out there. So I can justify it because it's my job. But if it wasn't my job, it'd be very, very, very hard to justify. So I look at it, you know, somewhat in the same sense of what I think most of you guys look at it. It's really cool stuff. It's really cool technology. But, man, I, I viewed it as I tried to take myself back when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, just trying to make it in the game. I, I don't know if I could have made it in the game with this technology back then and not being able to have it. So, I get both sides of it. I do. This part is what I wanted to talk about. Snagging fish. <laughs> Snagging fish on live scope. Okay. There's some things that are pretty absurd in fishing. Okay. And I hear about and they come up. And it's very it's a very small percentage of people that think this way. This is one that I just I, I understand why people might think this, right? But guys, it, it, I would assume that every single 100%, I'm saying 100%, you should never say 100%. I'm assuming 100% of people that think this is actually possible don't own live scope. You just don't own live scope. And I'm saying this because I've just watched, I'm not going to go over there and say hundreds of thousands of fish. It's pretty quick. Like in the first day, if you ever use it, you don't even have to catch a fish on it. You don't have to do anything. You just have to kind of watch fish on it. You'll understand what I'm talking about. And anyone that's seen it is like, yeah, it's pretty much impossible. Impossible. And say, just just say by the by the luck, just by pure luck that it actually does happen. It's by luck. It's by accident. It's not that you actually meant to do this. People snag fish all the time fishing. Um, it's not that your bait's running into them. They're actually trying to go for your bait and eat it, okay? But before we even get into that, this is all I'm going to say. If you've watched fish on LiveScope, two things happen. Two things, from what I've seen. 
just two. One is this. You bring your bait up next to a fish on live scope, and it's gonna do one of two things. If it doesn't see it right away, right, it's going to get out of the way. The fish that don't get out of the way, those aren't bass. Bass will always get out of the way of your bait. They won't let your bait just run into them. Impossible. The other thing is 99% of the fish, I, I'm saying 99, I really wanna say 100. I've never seen a fish come from the front and, and attack it forward. Like they either all come up from behind it or they all come up from underneath it. And so I've never seen one get in a position where it sits there and allows you to work a bait to them and like hit them. <laughs> like, I've never seen that happen. I've seen you get up to them and next to a stump and they come over there and eat it. But like I said, go watch John Cruz's video about how much space we're working with, right? But for the most part, all the fish that eat your bait or follow it and listen to anybody who who's ever done live scope when they talk about it, they're all following it or come from underneath. None of them come down. They follow a bait down, like if you throw a drop shot or something. But none of them sit here and just go, hey, I'm just going to let you sit here and, and keep casting at me and I'm not going to get out of your way. Dude, they're, <laughs> that fish wouldn't make it very long if he was that dumb, okay? Like, they're not stupid. They're not going to, they're in their own environment. They're not going to let things just hit them, okay? So, I don't even know what more of the video I need to talk about. It's just, like I said, guys making assumptions about live scope that, that they don't really know anything about. I don't have to be the world renowned leader of knowledge of live scope. I've just witnessed it. It's pretty obvious. Any, like I said, anyone within a couple of hours, you're going to be like, Oh yeah, this is pretty impossible. It's pretty impossible. Day one, day one. I think everyone who uses live scope would understand going, Oh yeah, it's pretty much impossible to snag a fish doing this. Right? The only argument I've ever heard is that there's a school of fish down there and you throw a jigging spoon down there and snag one. If that's your deal, you do realize people have been finding fish on bottom by the hundreds for years now, for years, and throwing jigging spoons in them. You don't need live scope for that. You needed, you didn't even need down imaging for that or even 2D sonar. I mean, if you just knew where spots were, there were hundreds of fish down there out there deep. Go to Rayburn, Kentucky Lake, back when it was good, Gunnersville, any of these lakes. There are schools out there with hundreds of fish in them. You could throw a chicken spoon in all of them. Be my guest to go try to snag fish out there. You don't need live scope to do that. A hundred fish grouped up in a big wad down on the bottom. Throw your chicken spoon down there. Maybe you snag one. You don't, it has, it's irrelevant to live scope though, guys. You don't need live scope for that. Okay. So yes, good luck. Um, I don't know how many times that you're throwing your chicken spoon out there and you're not snagging fish even when there's hundreds of them down there. I get the whole fascination with this whole live scope and people are going around snagging fish. It's not happening. Now, are people snagging fish? Yeah, they've been snagging fish from, from day one. That's a whole different story though, okay? And there's a whole, man, do I do this? Yeah, no. No, I'm gonna do another video. I'm gonna do a whole nother video on should you be allowed to keep fish that are snagged. Well, that's two separate videos, two separate videos. One intentionally snagging, and then another one where you don't catch it in the mouth. So you think. So you think you don't catch it in the mouth. And that's where the argument lies, and that's why hmm, I'm going to have to get on that one, because that one's, that one's an easy one for me. And there's probably some things you don't think about. I'm not too sure, but I'll get into that. I might do that video straight up next because that one, I have to have, that one I'm gonna have to go into. Snagging fish on live scope, it's not because they did it on purpose. It's because a probably fish struck at it and missed and you accidentally got it. Accident, it happens all the time. I've known guys snagging fish on Carolina rigs. I've snagged some fish on some Carolina rigs before because they bite the weight, okay? They bite the weight and your hook's over here with the Carolina rig. You don't know what's biting the weight. I'm not a rocket science. Stunner. I don't know. I just know something's tugging on it, right? 
And if anyone that's been Carolina Reagan with Kentucky's around, spotted bass, spotted bass are the worst. They always go and bite your weight. White bass are the, really the worst. But there's been times where one will bite your weight, a bass, you set the hook, and all of a sudden your hook gets them. It's usually in the belly. Somewhere in the belly is usually where you'll snag them. That's happened, I don't know, we Carolina rig, rig down here a bunch. Maybe happened three times in my life. I'm not rolling around there. That's my pattern, right? And that's what guys are getting at is like, guy, like they're worried that this is becoming a pattern for people, that they're going around doing this. They're not doing this, guys, right? I've snagged a fish or two on a jigging spoon. I don't think I've ever snagged one on a on a crankbait before. Um, usually your crankbait hits them and you can feel them. If there's a big school of them down there, you can feel your crankbait hitting fish. Don't snag any. So, just for all the guys out there, like I said, just don't don't be that guy. Don't be the guy. If you if y'all follow my channel, you know I keep it really real, right? You know this. There's things I don't talk about on my channel. I'm not up here talking about the Great Lakes and going out there and telling y'all how to fish the Great Lakes. You want to know why? I'm out of my element. Could I go catch some fish out there? Yeah, I think I could. I learned some stuff. There's probably I couldn't tell you how many other people up there probably understand the Great Lakes a thousand times more than me, 100%. I don't talk about stuff like that. I don't talk about stuff in tournaments that I don't know anything about. Like when things happen, when there was a wreck in a tournament, when there was this argument in a tournament. Like I don't talk about things and comment on things I know nothing about. I try not to, I try to stay away from that. There's a reason and I still am just blown away by them amount of people who comment on things that they have little to no, no knowledge about to me snagging fish on live scope is pretty easy one to talk about that it's pretty much not ever happening and anyone like i said that's probably commenting on that or making comments about that probably has never looked at live scope very much or ever or doesn't own one and they're just they're just trolling no, they're not trolling. They're really not. They just don't, they just don't know any better. They just don't. I'm trying to tell y'all. Just think. Think before you go make some of those comments. I promise. Do some research. Listen to a guy like John Cruz. Find out some things. Learn a little bit about LiveScope. I would. I would before I'd go make those comments. Just a thought. Food for Thought with Todd Castanet. That should be my next. Now, I get in trouble doing that.